Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Emana Amawe. Coming up on the program today. Army intercepts militia headsmen in Benue State. Open grazing becomes illegal in some areas of Edo State. And then Ugo State steps up preparations for the rainy season. Welcome to the program that brings you news from the north, south, east and west of Nigeria. Troops of Operation Mesa, a special forces battalion of the Nigerian army operating in Benue state, have killed four suspected militia headsmen in Goma local government area. A statement from the Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Texas Chuku, says men of the 72 Special Division had encountered about 20 militia headsmen during a routine patrol in Teguma village. Four of the bandits were reportedly killed while the others fled. According to the statement, the security forces recovered four AK-47 rifles and 33 rounds of ammunition. This latest encounter with suspected headsmen comes after the police in Benue State confirmed four of their officers killed in an ambush by the armed bandits in Logo local government area. Meanwhile, police in Borono State have confirmed the arrest of a female suicide bomber in Meduguri, the state capital. A statement from the Borono State Command explains that policemen, alongside their EOD counterparts, discovered the suspect, one Zara Idris, behind the Bakasi IDP camp, where she was about to set up her explosive device. The team arrested the suspect and cordoned off the area for a proper search. The Commissioner of Police has asked residents to report any suspicious movement or objects around them to security agencies. And the Senate has summoned some top government officials to explain the release of $462 million for the purchase of helicopters by the federal government without National Assembly appropriation. The Minister of Defense, Mansour Dan Ali, the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adoshu, and CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele are to appear before the Committee on Appropriations, which has been given one week to present its findings to the federal lawmakers. The summon is coming after Senator Samuel Ayaun drew the attention of the Senate to the alleged expenditure of $462 million by the federal government for the purchase of helicopters. The governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, has placed a 90-day ban on all grazing activities in three communities in Ovia Northeast local government area. He says it's an interim measure to forestall further destruction of life and property allegedly perpetrated by suspected headsmen. Governor Basiki made the announcement after listening to a delegation from the affected communities in a town hall meeting. Early arrivals for a special town hall meeting at the Palace of Denogi of Odegi in Odegi community of Yanov Northeast local government area of Edo State. The governor of Edo State, Gardun Obasaki, and the company of service chiefs is also in attendance. Complaints about criminal activities of alleged herdsmen operating in the environs brought before the state government has resulted in this security stakeholders meeting. The representatives of the aggrieved communities, Odige, Awa and Odigwetwe, narrate tales of destruction of property inflicted upon them. Initially, this is the community with food. We have nothing again. They will put that plantain. They root your yam, give to cattle. Why? Why are we afraid? It's because they sling rifle. Very many security personnel, they went to the, to the bush and discovered a lot of camps. Responding, Governor Baseki appeals for calm, adding that the attacks have traces of sabotage from unscrupulous elements. When, as you say, you were growing up, the headsmen used to see, what do they hold? What do they need to have a cow? So, so what you see now are not headsmen in the way we used to know them. These are criminals and these are militants. They are criminals. And we don't want you to mix them with those who live with us. 
peacefully. He goes further to make a strong pronouncement on grazing activities in the affected communities. I cannot accept the situation in these communities any further. So for the next 90 days, we ban any grazing in these communities. Following this grazing ban, the Edo state government is to set up a task force comprising security operatives as well as local vigilante groups to comb the affected forests and communities for the alleged herdsmen within the next two weeks. 6.4 million naira worth of marijuana has been seized by the Federal Operations Command of the Nigerian Customs Service, Ikeja. The illicit drug, weighing 1,350 kilograms, was found in a container by officers along the Olorunda axis of Ogun State. Men of the command also impounded luxury cars whose owners were found to have evaded paying customs duties. The government warehouse Ikeja Lagos is filled from end to end with used household products, second-hand clothing, used tires and confiscated vehicles, all seized by the officials of the Nigerian Customs Service. <laughs> Top on the list of seizures, however, is a container filled with mounds of Indian hemp, an illicit drug, along Olonruda axis of Ogun State. Cannabis, sativa, Indian hemp, Illicit drugs seized. Uh, 1,350 kg was over 6.4 million. These are dangerous drugs. They are not allowed to come in because their consumption affects the population. And by doing so, when we don't have sound, people will sound the mind will affect the production of our economy. These exotic cars are also hot on the list of seizures brought in by the command across the western zone in the first quarter of 2018. While some are being detained temporarily until the owners provide proof of duty payment, 64 will be forfeited to the federal government over evasion of duty payment. Section 147 of the SEMA has empowered the custom officers to break, post open any building, including dwelling house or houses, where we have reasonable suspicion, goods prohibited are kept there, or government revenue has not been collected, we post this open and we evacuate these goods to the government warehouse. This is what informed our decision to go after those cars what we normally do when we reach there based on intelligence, we ask them to provide evidence of duty payment, money meant for the federal government. Anybody who does provide, and we are sure adequate money or money meant for the government is adequately collected, is caught free. Those ones that they have short paid the government will bring the vehicles until additional money is paid. Those one who do not have at all, who do not pay government money, they smuggle the vehicles. We see them outright. The Federal Operations Unit Command of the NCS says it will continue to make such seizures to curb smuggling and plug the loopholes that lead to a huge revenue loss for the federal government. When the program returns in a moment, Lagos may be on its way to becoming one of the largest economies in the world. We'll find out how when we come back.